Howdy folks, Tex Grabner here with Tex Grabner Outdoors, new videos every week, so if you don't want to miss out on any of it, you better make sure that you click subscribe, check that notification box, and check my channel every week for brand new adventures. I love reading your comments and I really do appreciate all of you that watch. Just back from an adventure at the Archery Trade Association show for 2018 in Indianapolis, Indiana. And I hope you're ready for some gonzo-style journalism because they gave me a press pass for the third year in a row. So I hope you guys enjoy my coverage of the Archery Trade Association show 2018. Never been to the Archery Trade Association show. It is basically like a redneck version of Comic Con. It is where you go to see and be seen. Some good looking bows. Yeah, I know, right? They're pretty. That Super Diablo is really pretty. Thank you. <laughs> the big devil. This looks like an absolutely excellent idea. Well, that's a small like it. My name is William Hall. I'm with Encore Targets. I'm their national product manager. And we are the affordable alternative to 3D targets. Uh, 3D targets are very cross prohibitive. It's a couple hundred bucks a pop. And our targets are designed to be placed on top of your bag or your block, whatever field target you're already uh, in possession of, shooting at your home uh, or at your range or your club, wherever it might be. And the thing about our targets is we've got over 50 different targets available, animals, fun targets, different things like that. They have the universal scoring range, so it's just like shooting at your 3D target. But the difference with ours and the difference between us and, say, one of the other plastic printed targets or a paper target, something like that, is that our targets are laser cut out of 5 inch foam, 5 eighths inch thick foam, uh, laser cut, hand painted, airbrushed. And when the arrow goes in, because it's a low density foam, it doesn't actually physically break most of the fibers. It pushes them to the side because there's plenty of room for expansion. So what happens after the arrow is withdrawn, as we stand here and talk for another minute or two, that hole is going to slowly close itself back up. So it's going to end up looking like these other holes that we've poked through, which you can barely really see. So that self-healing element makes them extremely durable. And because they're on the foam, they're totally impervious to weather. You can leave them out in snow, you can leave them out in rain, heat, sunshine, cold, whatever the case may be. The target itself doesn't get damaged at all. And they really do take thousands of shots. This target in particular uh, was shot at by my customers at our indoor range. And we put up a board and we did tally marks. And this is what a thousand shots looks like in one of our targets. So again, weatherproof, self-healing, last a long time and they're a fraction of the price of a 3D target. You can get our larger size game animals for typically $30 to $35 as opposed to a couple hundred that you'd have to plop down on a 3D target. I personally am interested in this just so that I can finally be going all tour rock in the backyard like that. <laughs> so, yep, we've got a line of, uh, of dinosaurs, we've got a line of zombies, and we're working on aliens. We're going to have those in about two months. We're still working on the colors and the patterns and stuff, but we're going to have some aliens coming out soon, too. Thank you very much for your time. It was good to meet you. I'm not kidding. I want the Rex. Next is dragons. Yeah, next is dragons. <laughs> Yeah, 
a.m. That deer was killed 10 miles from where I hunt. <laughs> so tell me what I'm holding here. This is our water mock recurve, and one of the new features on that we have this year out for any boat. Um, this was just on recurve as our channel cam arrow rest, uh, fully machined aluminum, it's got a brass roller on there, stainless hardware, it's an enclosed rest so you can, with boat fishing we're always moving a lot in the boat, swinging around, we'll hold the arrow in place and we'll be ready for when the shot needs to be taken. That is really cool. It's just weird being around this many people. How weird being around this much shiny shit that I can't afford. And a lot of it, you know, I don't have any interest in. Some of it I do, but it, like I say, it's like Redneck Comic Con, and there's so much to take in and so much to do and see. Thank you. 
So I'm here at Redneck Hunt Blinds. We're looking at a bale blind right now. I'm not gonna bullshit you, I can't afford one, but I eventually wanna get a hold of one. So if somebody's been living under a rock for a few years and hasn't heard of this blind system, please tell them about it. So this is our outfitter size hay bale blind. 72 inches long, 72 wide, by 72 deep on the round portion. This is an all steel tubing construction frame, basically made out of one inch and three quarter inch steel tubing, um, bolts together. The outer part here is made out of a rainproof, windproof backer with a little bit of burlap material and then we use an all natural media that goes on top of it. A mixture of some coconut husk, straw, hay. So it gives you that real depth look and smell from it. The whole blind takes you about anywhere 30 minutes to an hour to assemble and set up. Uh, once you do that, take the cover on and off every year, leave the frame out. It has a UV rated protective powder coating on it. Um, it lasts for years. The windows are on a slide system, slide up and down very easily. It's got six total windows, one on each end, two in the front and two in the back. Um, the door on one end. Uh, this can be UPS to you. Call into Redneck Blinds or visit us at redneckblinds.com. And this right here retails for $5.99 with free shipping to your door. Well, thank you very much. It's been very informative, and I'm glad to know that this actually comes off. Yes. So you can leave the skeleton in the field and put the cover back over it. About five or ten minutes, maybe. You can cover off, put it back on. Sweet. Super easy. Thank you. You guys have a great day. Yep, have a good one. All right, so we're at the fourth arrow booth, and this is probably what I can tell from what my experience is of using cheap junky camera mounts that I've made a lot of myself and bought in other companies. This is something that I need to get, but you're gonna tell me why I already want it. Is I've had some real bad camera mounts and I've made some. But if somebody is getting into YouTube, they can probably skip the bullshit and go straight to the top. So, Tell me about this, the fourth air mount. Yeah, there's no secret about what's out there. Um, so I'll just kind of show you a little bit of one of the differences with the fourth air mount. So uh, this is our stiff arm. It's probably our most popular arm that we sell. It's uh, good for up to 10 pounds um, weight limit on the end of it. Um, but what's innovative and different about our stuff, set that down, is our shoulder and base mount. We vamped it a little bit this year. We basically flipped our shoulder added a bridge, um, or flipped our base and added a bridge to the shoulder to connect it to the base and make it really rock solid. Um, but some of the things that make us different is our leveling system. Yeah, I love it. On our setup, you can mount on any angle branch because this is the groove, and you can find your level spot on any angle branch, pretty much as long as it's big enough for the teeth of the base to, to bite into it, you're good to go. Um, the, other, the other good thing about our system that other people aren't doing is we sell our bases four packs for $100. Um, so, uh, so the idea is you, you leave your base in the tree, set it up, 
one time in the spot you like and it's always there. Um, you can pull them out and carry them with you if you want, but generally most guys will just carry out their shoulder and their arm. That's all you need to carry in your pack. Cuts down on weight, um, cuts down on space taken up in your pack. It's going to be in your belt, so you just drop it in there when you get there. And you're all set. So the leveling is a huge selling point for me because with the cheaper mounts, if the deer don't come in where the camera is level, it can fly around when you try and get it. Very interesting. Can I get your autograph real quick? Yeah. As far as. <laughs> What's up, What's up brother? Good, man. Doing good. I was watching this. You know, basically, I level that bowl there. And this is literally, as it says, a stiff arm. And it's stiff. Cheaper mounts are not stiff. They will wobble. Trust me, I know. I've seen them do it, and I've done it. But this fluid head is head and shoulders because it's quiet, and it doesn't jump. So I'm eventually hopeful to be able to get a whole bottle and our camera I still put our film solo hunt next season. Got the invitation and was there in Berlin when the premiere in, in Europe or in Germany was and together with all the actors. And this was a really nice uh, event with them all together. So we had their uh, Gandalf and all these actors were there with us together in the oh, cinema dome and after that in the German museum together for a dinner. That is so awesome. I'm all about it. So, Airpaw Archery makes elven bows. So, is it true that your company provided the bow of Legolas from Lord of the Rings? Yes, of course. It's a, it's a few years ago we produced the Lord the, the bow from Legolas and the bow of the elven warriors when he came into a elven's club. For one of those. So we had an official license that produced the bowls and also the sliver and the arrow. That is so cool to me because I'm very into Tolkien and so it's a pleasure to actually have that internet legend verified. ATA Show 2018, I'm here with Mike Austin, and he saw my video, has pulled me aside, wanted to show me this product here. It actually seems pretty cool. It's a light and knock system, so I'm going to hand this off to you to let you take it over, because traditionally I've been a fan of nocturnal knocks myself, but you can tell us about it just as much as you tell me about it. We're bowstring activated. We don't come on until we leave the string, and we stay on until you lock it back out. Put it back on the string and hold the lock. We're available in X up in sizing. We also offer a universal fit, which is an X with a bushing. We're, we also have crossbow and flat back and half moon. We're retailing for $24.99. We're available in red, green, blue, and pink. Oh, by the way, I totally forgot to mention. Yeah, by the way, this is Glory Knox. Glory Knox. Double take archery. Boy, I messed that one up. It's a big station. You can get it in a six or seven inch. So, ATA Show 2018 here at the Obsession Shooting Booth. 
mixing to shoot the fixation. And we'll see how I do with it. Because I'm a fan of the fact that it can bow, it's built right. You should literally be able to sit in your hand with a rest on it as it is set up right here and be shootable, no stabilizer. If it's built right, it ought to work just fine and you don't need a rod on it until you start hanging other stuff off. That's my opinion. It ought to come ready to go from the factory and then you tune it up as you need to for the extra stuff you put on it. So we'll see if I can do it. First shot with a bow that I've not shot today is always a little bit weird. I gotta figure it out. So we'll see if I can shoot a little bit better. It does have an interesting draw cycle, like it's got a spring. It's smooth, but it's got a spring to it as the pants is all over. It's nice, but you know, when you get over it. The draw cycle is so different because it's this all the way to the front. And with a traditional, as I come back, the way it's like stacking weight plates on a barbell the further away from the race height you should get. Thank you for uh, putting this place. I am a fan of the simple. I am a fan of things working. So I am a fan of this bow. So it is a fun bow to shoot. And it is a good bow, and I can tell you that it is a good bow because it shoots the way their bow should shoot without having to have any fancy other shit on it. You cannot buy performance, you only get performance through practice. Alright, you ready? Well, my ATA show experience is winding down pretty fast here. I've had a lot of fun, I've met a lot of people, I have been shown great respect by people. If you want to come to the ATA show and you're a young, creative outdoorsman, Start a YouTube channel, be yourself, get a camera, and film. Establish your brand, then when the ATA show registration comes around, register yourself for a press badge because of your YouTube channel. If you can show sufficient traffic during the vetting process, for being able to generate views to dignify the fact that you are a legitimate media source. They should approve you. They have approved me three years in a row. And so if you want to be here, make your brand, work hard, and chase your dreams. It's not going to be easy. It is attainable. So if you want to be here, that's how you get here. I was shown great respect by many people that I respect very much, and it's very humbling to me every time that I'm walking around. But it's kind of like a trapper's rendezvous where you only see certain people, you know, a couple maybe once a year. And so it ends up being that, you know, the ATA show is... Other than opening day, the ATA show is like the biggest day for bow hunting in America where all the products get brought out. And over the course of this show, I've seen a lot of products that I don't believe in or that I don't think even need to exist. And I haven't shown them to you. There are other products that I do believe in, but you are the consumer. You rely on my judgment and my credibility to not tell you lies and not tell you bullshit where you end up spending your hard-earned money because nobody's giving you this stuff to say that it is good. You rely on me 
And so I tend to ask hard questions and I tend not to cover things that I don't believe in. So I really have a lot of fun when I come to the ATA show. I'm honored that I even rate for a legitimate press badge. And I hope that you guys have enjoyed watching this Text Grabner Outdoors adventure. Because I'm me all the time. That's just the way that I am. And so it's great getting to see people. It's great getting to talk to manufacturers. And it's just a really great experience. So if you want to be where I am right now in the press room at the Archery Trade Association show, work hard and chase your dreams. Because I'm nobody, but to some people I'm somebody. The ATA show is one of the highlights of my year. Got to hang out with the Hushin guys. Got to hang out with Born and Raised Outdoors here on YouTube at the ATA show. Got to eat dinner with the Bone Collector crew. All great people. Now life ain't like the pornos and hunting ain't like the TV shows. But it's so humbling to me to find out that Mike Waddell and the Bone Collector crew actually watched my channel. So you never really know who you might end up friends with. But one thing that has always troubled me about going to trade shows is the marketing aspect of it. Because I believe that hunting is a form of religion and I don't have the right to tell you how you should go about it. Do it how you feel okay about doing it. Or don't do it at all. But one thing that troubles me about the industry in general, about the way that it goes about marketing itself is, we have these people who are anti-hunting. They see us as murdering these helpless animals that are completely defenseless. Here's the deal. If everything in our marketing is about making it easier, making it so that you don't have to work so hard, making it so that you don't have to practice so much. At what point do we make our detractors correct? At some point it seems like we lost track of the idea of the fact that this is a rite of passage. That it requires dedication and it requires work to be able to be good at what you want to do. I will tell you this honestly. You cannot buy performance. You only get performance through persistence. So, that being said, I love the ATA show. I love going there. But there's something that troubles me about the marketing because there's so much in the marketing of bow hunting products that simply is about trying to make it easier. Now I have the luxury of being able to pretty much hunt as much as I want and hunt in the way that I want. And so it's not up to me to tell you how you ought to be doing it. So I hope you guys have enjoyed watching this Texas Grabner Outdoors adventure. As always, God bless all my sports center of America. Join the NRA to protect your rights. Please become my friends over at SOETactical.com. Thank you very much to those of you who know I'm law enforcement, those of you serving in the military. Thanks for watching. Texas, grabbing your outdoors.